This is chapter 11, section 2, Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. As I said in the last section, acids and bases have been known for a long time, but the first really successful definition of how they behave was due to Arrhenius in the late 1800s. However, some compounds which have been known to behave as acids or bases for a long time still don't quite make sense in terms of this Arrhenius definition. For example, if you look at ammonia, which is NH3, this is a substance that's well known to behave as a base. It reacts with acids to form salts, it turns litmus paper blue, it has a soapy or slippery feel to it, and so on. But just from the formula, you can see that there are clearly no hydroxide or OH- ions in the compound itself. This led scientists to look for a new definition of acids and bases that could expand this idea to a more general process. And in fact, two scientists, Bronsted and Lowry, working separately for one another, both came to the same conclusions uh, at the same time. They both published their papers in 1923, where they discussed the sort of uniqueness of the hydrogen ion in the definition of acids and bases. Bronsted and Lowry both proposed that an acid-base reaction is not just the dissociation of compounds into ions and water, but rather the transfer or exchange of a proton between two chemical structures. The first thing to recognize here is that when we talk about a proton, we're really talking about an H plus ion. If you think about the structure of hydrogen, it is a nucleus consisting of a single proton, since it's atomic number one, orbited by one single electron. If you get rid of the electron to leave behind a positive ion, really what you have then is a bare proton. So oftentimes we'll use proton as a synonym for the H plus hydrogen ion. Here in this example, we have formic acid, HCHO2, and water, regular water molecule here. And this hydrogen in the HCHO2 formic acid molecule is able to dissociate. Under the Arrhenius definition, we would just think of this as a breaking of this bond between the hydrogen and the rest of the molecule to leave behind a negative ion. In the Bronsted-Lowry definition, however, it's a little bit different. Instead of the acid breaking down, we think of the acid as transferring its proton to another molecule, in this case, to a water molecule. And so what you end up with is the anion left behind from the acid. In this case, you've got rid of this first hydrogen here, that's the acidic one, and you're left with the CHO2 minus, or formate ion, and the hydrogen, or the proton, which is transferred to the water, has now turned water, H2O, into H3O plus. It has a plus charge because the hydrogen ion brought along a plus charge with it. So according to the Bronsted-Lowry theory, an acid is a substance that donates hydrogen ions or donates protons, and a base is a substance that accepts hydrogen ions or accepts protons. Here we can see the example of hydrochloric acid. Now, according to the Arrhenius definition, hydrochloric acid simply breaks down into hydrogen ions and chloride ions, and it's as simple as that. The Bronsted-Lowry theory takes this a little bit further, and it says that the HCl doesn't simply dissociate in water, but it takes its hydrogen and it donates it to the water molecule. Since hydrochloric acid is donating a proton, it's the acid, and since water is accepting a proton, it's a base. As a result, the water molecule H2O gains an H plus and becomes H3O plus. This is what we call the hydronium ion. That's going to be very important. The hydrochloric acid, having lost the hydrogen, now is just the chloride ion, Cl minus. So at first it seems like this is unnecessarily complicated, but it's going to be helpful in a couple of ways. One of the ways that it's uh, more useful is that it's now understood that individual protons or bare protons don't really exist in water for any appreciable amount of time. Anytime a hydrogen ion comes off of one compound in a water solution, it's almost immediately going to attach to a water molecule and form hydronium. So here, where we see an H plus in the Arrhenius definition, we see an H3O plus in the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Later on, we're going to learn how to calculate pHs and things like that using concentrations of ions. And so it's useful to know now that whenever we talk about H plus, uh, 
we can really think of it just as a shorthand or a nickname for H3O plus, the hydronium ion. This next example is going to show us another way that the Bronsted-Lowry theory is a little bit more useful than the Arrhenius theory, or at least applies to a wider range of compounds. So recall that NH3 is known to behave as a base, but it doesn't contain any hydroxide ions. So why does it behave as a base? Well, let's look at the Bronsted-Lowry theory. You have a molecule of NH3 and you have a molecule of water, H2O. When these two interact, rather than the ammonia giving away a hydrogen atom or hydrogen ion to water, the ammonia takes a hydrogen ion from water. As a result, the, the ammonia molecule becomes NH4+, plus, or the ammonium ion, and the water molecule, having lost a proton, becomes OH-, or the hydroxide ion. So this is the way that ammonia produces more hydroxide ions in solution. It doesn't dissociate into hydroxide, it pulls hydrogens off of water molecules and leaves behind hydroxides. So from the Bronsted-Lowry definition, ammonia, which accepts the proton, is the base, and water in this case is giving away a proton, and so it's behaving as an acid. Note that in the last slide, water was behaving as a base by accepting a proton. Here, it's behaving as an acid by donating a proton. We'll talk about this more later, but it's important to see that the Bronsted-Lowry definition is really dependent on the context. It's really an interaction between two substances. And so there are many substances which can behave as a base under certain conditions, but also behave as an acid under other conditions. In acid-base reactions, it's important to be able to identify the Bronsted-Lowry acid and base from the chemical equation. Keep in mind that it's not always going to be possible to identify something as a Bronsted-Lowry acid or base just from its chemical formula by itself. We've already seen that there are certain substances, like water, which can behave as an acid in some cases and as a base in others. So we really need to take a look at the entire chemical equation and understand what's happening in the reaction at a molecular level. In this first example, we have HNO3 interacting with water, and this produces H3O plus and NO3 minus. It should be pretty clear that what's happening is the HNO3 is losing a proton to become NO3 minus. So this hydrogen ion is being lost from the HNO3, which means it's being donated to the H2O. The H2O is accepting a proton and becoming H3O plus. So the substance that donates a proton, HNO3, is the acid, and the substance that accepts the proton, H2O, is a base. In this case, this is consistent with our understanding of HNO3 as an Arrhenius acid. It's H plus bonded to the nitrate ion, NO3 minus, and it's actually called nitric acid. So this makes sense. The next example is a little bit less straightforward. Here we have HCO3 minus interacting with water, H2O, and this produces H2CO3 and OH minus. HCO3 minus is a little bit tricky because it has a hydrogen in it, and it could donate that hydrogen and behave as an acid. In this case, however, that's not what it's doing. HCO3 minus is becoming H2CO3 by taking a proton from water. And so water loses a proton and becomes hydroxide, OH minus. HCO3, since it's accepting a proton from the water, is actually behaving as a base. And water, which is donating a proton, is in this case behaving as an acid. This concept of acid-base reactions being an exchange of a proton leads to the concept of conjugate acid-base pairs. In any acid-base reaction, there are really two conjugate acid-base pairs. Each pair is related through the loss or gain of a single H plus ion or proton. The acid and base in a conjugate pair are going to be on opposite sides of the reaction arrow. If you think of an acid-base reaction as a game of catch between two substances that are throwing a proton back and forth, then the conjugate pair is really the same thing just with or without the proton, when it has the ball and when it doesn't have the ball. So for example, in this reaction, we're using HA as just a generic formula for any acid, uh, 
And so HA has a proton, it has an H, and it can donate that proton to B. So in donating the proton, it behaves as an acid. But once it loses the proton, once it throws the proton away, what's left is the A minus ion, and that is its conjugate base. On the other hand, B, which is behaving as a base in the forward direction, it has no proton, it has no acid or hydrogen ion to begin with, it accepts a hydrogen ion and becomes BH+. Plus. And so B is conjugate to BH+. Plus. It's the same structure, the same compound, with and without a proton. This is a more concrete example using HF for hydrofluoric acid. This equation is that HF plus H2O yields F minus and H3O plus. And so clearly what's going on here is that the HF is donating a proton to water, it's leaving behind F minus, and the water is becoming H3O plus. So we know that the substance that is donating a proton is the acid, and the substance that's accepting a proton is a base. However, this is not the acid-base conjugate pair that we're talking about. The conjugate base to HF is going to be found on the other side of the equilibrium. So HF loses a hydrogen and becomes F minus. And so that's the conjugate base. Water, H2O, is behaving as a base, and when it gains a proton, it becomes H3O plus, and so H3O plus is the conjugate acid to water. We can think of each of these pairs as being a structure that, again, only differs by the presence or absence of a single proton. So HF has a proton, F minus doesn't. That makes these an acid base conjugate pair. Water has two protons. H3O plus has three protons, the difference there is just a single proton, and so that is an acid-base conjugate pair. So remember, the members of a conjugate pair are always going to be found on either side, on opposite sides of a chemical equation, because they're really the same thing, just whether it's lost or gained a proton. In the example of ammonia interacting with water, we know that the NH3 molecule is going to take a proton from water, and so NH3 is going to turn into NH4+. And so NH3 and NH4 plus are a conjugate pair. The base is NH3 because it accepts a proton, and the acid is NH4 plus because it has an extra proton. Water, in this case, is giving away a proton and becoming hydroxide, OH-. And so water and hydroxide are the other conjugate acid-base pair, and Water is the acid because it's donating a proton, and OH is the base because it's missing a proton. So if we're given the formula for a substance and asked to find either the conjugate base or the conjugate acid, it's very easy. We just have to understand which one it's asking for and then either add or remove a proton accordingly. So in these first three examples, number one, we're looking for the conjugate base for each of these substances. If we're looking for the conjugate base, that means each of these must be behaving as an acid. And so what we need to find is what happens to these formulas when they behave as an acid. Behaving as an acid means getting rid of a proton. So HBr, when it gets rid of a proton, becomes Br minus. H2S, when it gets rid of a proton, becomes Hs minus. Notice that one hydrogen is left over. We're not getting rid of all of the protons, we're just getting rid of one of them. Same thing for H2CO3, that's carbonic acid, and when it loses one proton, it becomes HCO3 minus. Every time you lose a proton, the charge goes down by one. So these are the conjugate bases for each of these substances when they behave as an acid. For question two, it's asking us to find the conjugate acid, which means we can assume that all of these are behaving as bases. For something to behave as a base means that it accepts a proton. And so NO2 minus accepts a proton and becomes HNO2. Remember, you usually write the hydrogen at the beginning of the formula. In the case of ammonia, that's an exception to that rule, because when you take NH3 and you add another hydrogen to it, you get NH4 plus, which is how you traditionally write the formula for ammonium. 
OH minus is another somewhat uh, exception to that rule because OH minus plus a proton really gives you, well, you could call it HOH, but that's actually just water, H2O. So again, just keep in mind that if we're asked to find the conjugate base for a substance, then the substance itself must be acting as an acid and dissociating into hydrogen ions and the negative ion. If we're asked to find the conjugate acid for a substance, then the substance must be acting as a base and combining with hydrogens to produce a new acid. This is another kind of question you might get about acid-base conjugate pairs. Here we're presented with five different pairs of substances or formulas, and we're asked to find which of these are true acid-base conjugate pairs and which aren't. So for each one, we really just need to look at the formulas and decide whether the difference between the two formulas is the presence or absence of a single proton, H plus ion, or if it's more than that. So for the first example, we have HNO2 and NO2 minus, and here the difference is really just an H plus ion, right? So HNO2, we can think of this as dissociating or breaking down into H plus and NO2 minus. And so these are conjugate pairs because the difference here is just the H plus. So yes, this is a conjugate pair. In the second case, we have H2CO3 and CO3 2 minus. And at first you might think that these are a conjugate pair as well. But in fact, if you take H2CO3 and you separate just one hydrogen ion from it, you're going to be left not with CO3 2 minus, but with HCO3 1 minus. So the difference between these two formulas is not just a single proton, it's actually two protons. You would have to undergo a further dissociation step of this substance to get CO3 2 minus. So H2O, H2CO3 is not conjugate to CO3 2 minus. They are not an acid base conjugate pair. In the third example, you have HCl and ClO4 minus. Here, if we think about HCl, it can break down into H plus and Cl minus, but the ClO4 minus is nowhere to be found at all. It's a completely different ion that has nothing to do with HCl. They just both happen to contain chlorine. So these are not an acid-base conjugate pair. They're not really related to one another whatsoever. In four, we have HS minus and H2S, and in this case, it's a little bit different from the first example because we're actually given the base first. So if you look at HS minus and you think about adding a proton to it, then you can create H2S. And so this is an acid-base conjugate pair. And then the last example we've already seen a couple of times, NH3 plus a hydrogen ion creates NH4 plus, which is ammonium, and so that's the conjugate acid. And so yes, NH3 ammonia and NH4 plus ammonium ion are conjugate to one another. We've seen a couple of examples of substances that can act as both acids and bases depending on the context or the other substances that they're interacting with. These substances are called amphoteric or amphiprotic. Water is the most common amphoteric substance because water can donate hydrogen ions when it reacts with a stronger base or it can accept hydrogen ions when it reacts with a stronger acid. So when water acts as an acid, it gives away a proton and becomes OH minus. When water acts as a base, it accepts a proton and becomes H3O plus. HCO3 minus is another substance which can do this. This is the bicarbonate ion and it can either act as an acid by giving away its last remaining proton to become CO3 2 minus, the carbonate ion, or it can accept a proton to become H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. In this example, we have a direct reaction between an acid and a base, and we're asked to find the conjugate acid-base pairs. The first step in doing that is identifying the acid and the base on the reactant side. So we need to figure out which substance is donating a proton and which substance is accepting a proton. It should be relatively clear that HNO3 is turning into NO3- by losing this hydrogen, this proton here. And at the same time, NH3 is turning into NH4+, by gaining that same proton, by accepting that proton. 
So on the reactant side, we can see that HNO3 is donating a proton, and that makes it an acid, whereas NH3 is accepting a proton, and that makes it a base. The next step is to figure out what these substances turn into when they undergo this reaction. So HNO3, as I said, loses a proton and becomes NO3 minus. So NO3 minus is the conjugate base to HNO3. NH3 gains a proton and becomes NH4 plus, which is now an acid because it has an extra proton. And so these are the conjugate pairs here. So the conjugate pairs are HNO3 is an acid and NO3 minus is its conjugate base. And the other pair is that NH3 is a base and NH4 plus is its conjugate acid.